Hi everyone, some gamer dude here. Today I am reviewing Wii Cross, or to be more precise, Wii Cross Diva Selection, the third iteration of the game. This is our first go around with Wii Cross outside of Japan, as we never got the original Wii Cross or key selection eras. Truth be told, I had intended to review Wii Cross a few years ago, the original one, as it interested me. But it just didn't happen as I never got around to learning how to play. Just watch the series. Now I can, and I've been playing it quite a bit over the last week. Is it good? Is it bad? That's what I'm here to give you my opinion on. So let's begin with the gameplay overview. The goal of Wii Cross is to crush all of your opponent's life cloth and hit them directly. If that sounds familiar, it's because Wii Cross draws heavy inspiration from two games. One being Duel Masters. The connection to Duel Masters is a little more direct though, as both games are produced by Takara Tomy, making Wii Cross the sister game to Duel Masters. However, Wii Cross is, thankfully, very far from its Duel Masters with boobs. Wii Cross starts with an extra deck called the Larig deck. In the Larig deck, you will have your Larig, which is girl spelt backwards, and your avatar card, though in context, she is your partner. Your Larig deck will contain levels 0 through 3 of that character. Next you have two assist Larig, the teammates of your center Larig that sit at her sides. These will have levels 0 through 2. Your three Larig also dictate what colors of cards you can have in your main deck. Wii Cross uses the same 5 color system of Magic and Duel Masters, but you can only include cards in your main deck that are the same color as your Larigs. Finally you can have two piece cards which is something of a super move in most circumstances, but can also be a reactionary ability. Most pieces either need you to have Larigs of specific colours, or a matching team of Larigs. All cards in the Larig deck are limit 1, and you can only have one piece with the team restriction. Your main deck is a 40 card deck made up of Signy, our creature equivalent, and spells. Signy come in levels 1 through 3, and spells can only be cast at sorcery speed. The main deck also has one further restriction on it, however. You can only include up to 20 cards that have the Life Burst ability, this game's equivalent of Shield Trigger. More on Life Burst later. A game of Wii Cross starts with you setting your three level 0 Larig face down, setting aside your Larig deck, shuffling your main deck, and drawing a hand of five cards. You may mulligan once, by shuffling cards you don't want into your deck, then drawing the same amount. You will want to do this, as in turn 1, you really want two level 1 Signy over everything else. Don't worry about sending back other cards. You go through your deck at a fairly brisk pace. After this, you set aside the top 7 cards of your deck face down as your life cloth. When both players finish this, they turn their Lareg face up and decide who goes first. Your turn starts with your up phase, where you up, what this game calls untap, all of your Signy and Larig. Next is the draw phase. Normally you draw two cards, but the first turn player only draws one card. Now is the enter phase, where you may place a card from your hand, or a Signy from your field into the enter zone, where it becomes enter, this game's resource system. This step is optional. Then we can grow our center Larig. Search your Larig deck for a Larig of the same type as your center Larig, but one level higher, pay its glow cost found on the bottom left of the card in Enna by sending that amount of cards from your Enna zone to your trash. Then place the Larig card on top of the lower level card. Now starts the main phase where you can summon Signy, cast spells, use action abilities, and use cards with timing main phase. Spells and action abilities are self-explanatory. Pay the cost by sending that many cards from your inner zone to your trash. Use the ability, resolve it. If it's a spell, send it to your trash. The rest are a little more involved. If the grow phase gave you some vanguard vibes, the board should too. It's a 3x2 board. 3 front row, your Signy, and 3 back row, your Larig. But like the Duel Masters comparison, it's fairly superficial all things considered. Signy do not have a cost attached, but a restriction. 
you could not summon a Signy of a higher level than your Centaur Rig. All of that is straight from Vanguard, but there is a further restriction. The total level of your three Signy cannot exceed the limit of your Larig. For example, on level 1, most Larig have a limit of 2, so they can only summon 2 level 1 Signy. As your Larig grows, you will fill out the board completely and summon stronger Signy, but you can never exceed that limit. If an effect would cause you to, you can't do it. Timing main phase involves the Larig deck again. You may play peace cards and grow your assist rigs. Pieces usually have a large cost and are used to push for game. Growing an assist Larig works like growing the center Larig, pay the glow cost, grow the Larig, but they typically have board control to push for damage. Assist Larig on the level 2 also increase your total Signy limit, but this usually comes into play very late game. So let's finally move on to the attack phase. The attack phase starts with the pre-attack step, in which the turn player is able to use any timing attack phase cards from their Larig deck. These are usually all timing main phase in addition to timing attack phase and defensive in nature. So times where the turn player does this is very limited. Next, the defense step where the defending player may use timing attack phase cards. These are used to prevent your opponent from attacking with their Signy. These are usually the enter abilities of level 2 assist Larig, as the timing attack phase allows them to grow in the defense step. This means your defensive options are extremely limited over a game. Now the turn player can finally attack with their Signy. To attack with the Signy, down it, what this game calls tap. And what happens next is conditional on what's in the opposing lane. If it's a Signy, and the power of your Signy is equal to or greater than the target, it is vanished. Vanished is very contextual to Weakross, as it sends the Signy to its owner's inner zone, not the trash. If the opposing lane is clear, it crushes one of your opponent's cloth. The card is sent to the check zone, where any life burst effects it may have are used. Then it is sent to its owner's inner zone. If they do not have any cloth left, and the attack gets through, you win. Now the Centaur Rig may attack by downing. The Centaur Rig always goes straight for your opponent's life cloth, which plays out the same and can only be stopped with a card with the guard ability, of which there is only one in the game so far, Servant Sharp. It's discarded by the defending player and the attack is stopped. Finally is the end phase, where the end of turn abilities trigger and both players discard down to six cards. It's taken me some time to formulate my opinions on Weakross. I've spent longer thinking about my feelings than I normally do for a review. When I first played Weakross in paper, it appeared brain dead. Exchange blows, build resources, clear lanes, use big flashy peace cards, gain. It's not thought provoking or exciting and honestly, it sets a bad initial impression. The game doesn't appear to have much interaction due to the lack of blocking and guarding from the two games it's influenced by, nor does it have instant speed spells. The combat isn't exciting outside of Life Burst. I could see sparks of something there, enough to keep pushing and do research to find the fun, but I was left questioning if the constructed format was considerably better the real game. It does give proper access to level to assist Larig with attack phase timing, something the decks only have one of between the two of them. I understood that the very act of summoning Signy was the defensive action. I just still wanted that more direct interaction. Then a couple of days into playing, TCG Academia puts up a video about Enna Starving. To summarize here, always question what your action actually accomplishes. Just swinging wildly doesn't do anything, but give your opponent resources, as Lifecloth and Vanished Signy both go to the Ender Zone. You are literally fueling your opponent's counterattack and big swing. If it doesn't do damage, and the Signy isn't a continuing threat due to an ongoing or activated effect, 
attacking probably isn't the most prudent decision. In retrospect, maybe this should have been more obvious. You open a lane by attacking, you can't do anything with that open lane. But it did make something click about Wii Cross. Well, two things. The first being is it's a game where learning the rules and learning how to play are different concepts. Sure, you can read the rule set and go through a game, but as with my experience, you might not get it, as the consequences of attacking or clearing the board with effects that vanish are not spelled out. It's not really intuitive that attacking is a poor decision for you, ultimately helping your opponent. It just ramps the opponent's game up, and if both players do it, it leads to a brain-dead slugfest. That isn't fun in the slightest. Learning how to play properly is, in my opinion, pivotal to getting any enjoyment out of Wii Cross. I believe it also puts something else about Wii Cross into perspective. My second point, it's deceptive. Wii Cross looks like a hybrid of Duel Masters and Vanguard. Its board is similar to Vanguard, and it utilises a few of Duel Masters' more prominent systems. It presents itself as a fairly straightforward game in terms of rule set. It's also cute, bright, and fun looking. However, I think if you go in expecting something similar to those games, a more visceral and aggressive game experience, you'll be very disappointed with what you find. That's not what Wii Cross is, and the resemblances to those games are ultimately superficial. Wii Cross actively punishes aggression. You give your opponent resources and might hit powerful life burst abilities, many of which stop further Signy attacks by downing them or vanishing them. What Wii Cross wants of the player is clean, deliberate, and precise actions. Weigh up the risk and how much momentum you can gain with that play. Then if it's advantageous, do it. This can go over to Signy as well. If you don't want a Signy to die to a life burst effect, most of which affect up Signy, best attack with it before you go for the life cloth, even if it gives your opponent resources. In this case, is the whole turn worth giving your opponent all of those resources to play with? Can you cope with all they can do to you next turn? If not, just attack with your Lurie. I think all of this relates to where the fun is in Wicross. I don't believe the gameplay as an overall experience in Wii Cross feels good per se. As I said, it's not a visceral experience. The gameplay is fine with no real flaw I can think of. But Wii Cross is not the epitome of the fun of turning cards sideways. No, I believe the fun in Wii Cross comes from a play coming together and ultimately outplaying your opponent. While the game has these big piece cards for pushing game, it's not about that. It's the turn-to-turn -turn smaller plays and the ultimate sense of satisfaction in knowing you played well when you win. We cross largely favours skill, and that's where the fun is. Getting good. Though I may categorise the enjoyment gotten from We cross as rewarding rather than fun. The more I think about We cross, the more I wonder how it will go over. Skill-based games typically have a hard time finding an audience, as most players are casuals, and casuals like a more handholdy experience, where the game mechanics provide a safety net for a lack of skill. Sure, the life burst is exactly that, but I think its influence on gameplay isn't as prominent as similar mechanics from other games. I don't think Weakross is a terribly extreme case of this. Learning how to play proficiently isn't the most arduous task, but as I said earlier, it's not intuitive. I have to wonder how many people will seek out the knowledge to get good, or stick with it till I learn because of the cute girls. So back to the beginning, Wii Cross, is it a good game or a bad game? How do I rate it? I think that is really subjective on what you're looking for from a game and your understanding of what you want from a game. Wii Cross when taken on its own virtues is a good game. I quite like it, but whether it's a good game for you, that's the big question. I can see how it handles interaction and the relative lack of hand-holding being off-putting, but if you stick with it, I think there's really something there. You just have to want what it's offering.
Till next time, this has been some gamer dude, and thanks for watching.